In the year 1900, a transatlantic liner ship could sail from New York to London in 9 to 12 days at a speed of 23 miles per hour. In 2011, a Boeing 787 airplane began traveling the same route in 7 hours, traversing speeds of 561 miles per hour. Fast forward to 2013, and Elon Musk shatters all expectations with his Hyperloop Alpha white paper, envisioning a train that could travel from Los Angeles to San Francisco in only 35 minutes at an incredible speed of 760 miles per hour. The release of this jaw-dropping paper inspired companies like Virgin Hyperloop to propose designs of a Hyperloop train traveling from New York to London in just 54 minutes, reaching speeds of up to 3,000 miles per hour. Hey everyone, Jerry here. In today's video, we're diving into more than just the groundbreaking technology behind the Hyperloop. We'll uncover how this revolutionary system could redefine the rules of transportation, disrupt the aviation industry, bring countries closer together, and most intriguingly, alter the way we connect as humans, transforming relationships, cultures, and the very fabric of our global society. Traveling today between cities like New York and London, or San Francisco and Los Angeles can be exciting, but also exhausting. A direct flight from New York to London covers about 5,500 kilometers and takes around 7 to 8 hours. Add time for airport security, boarding, and the inevitable waiting, and the journey can feel like an all-day event. Closer to home, the 600-kilometer trip between San Francisco and Los Angeles might seem less daunting, but the current options are far from perfect. Driving takes about 6 hours while flights often add just as much hassle as convenience, even if you're only in the air for an hour and a half. Now, imagine cutting these travel times drastically, making these trips feel as short as a casual car ride across town. That's the promise of Hyperloop technology. It's not just about speed, it's about reshaping how we think about distance altogether. So, what exactly is the Hyperloop? Think of it as a futuristic train system, but instead of rolling along tracks, it moves inside a sealed tube with almost no air resistance. Inside these tubes, pods carrying people or cargo can glide smoothly at speeds exceeding 1,000 km per hour. This magic happens thanks to magnetic levitation, or maglev technology, which uses magnets to lift and propel the pods. Without wheels or rails causing friction, these pods can achieve incredible speeds with remarkable efficiency. The idea might sound brand new, but the roots of Hyperloop technology go way back. In the early 1900s, Robert Goddard, often called the father of modern rocketry, first imagined a transport system that used vacuum tubes to reduce air resistance. The concept stayed mostly on paper for decades, but advancements in engineering and materials have finally made it possible to test this bold vision. Then, in 2013, Elon Musk brought the Hyperloop back into the spotlight with an open-source design that got the world buzzing. Since then, several companies have taken up the challenge to turn this dream into a reality. One of the most well-known players is Virgin Hyperloop, which successfully tested its technology with human passengers in 2020. Hyperloop Transportation Technologies HTT, is another contender, working on routes that could connect major cities in both the US and Europe. Meanwhile, Canada's TransPod is aiming to build a system capable of reaching speeds close to 1,200 km per hour. These companies share a bold vision, but each step faces steep challenges. Building long vacuum-sealed tubes over vast distances isn't cheap or simple. There are engineering hurdles, environmental concerns, and the sheer cost of construction to consider. The estimated cost for some projects runs into the billions, and even the most optimistic timelines suggest it could take years before Hyperloops become mainstream. But let's pause for a moment and imagine a world where these systems do exist. What could life look like? Imagine families living in one city but effortlessly visiting loved ones in another, 
thanks to trips that take minutes instead of hours. Picture romantic relationships no longer limited by geography because meeting up is faster than ordering delivery. <laughs> Hyperloops could make living in one place and working in another entirely normal, connecting people in ways we've only dreamed of. Of course, this isn't just about making life more convenient. It's about changing how we think about time and space. The distances that separate us today might soon feel trivial. But what does that mean for the industries that rely on those distances to stay relevant? Could Hyperloops really disrupt something as massive as air travel? Let's explore the ripple effects. For decades, aviation has dominated long-distance travel, with planes connecting cities and countries in once unimaginable ways. Yet, with maglev trains and Hyperloops reaching record-breaking speeds, this dominance could face a serious challenge. Imagine traveling between Beijing and Shanghai, more than 1,200 kilometers, in just three hours on China's high-speed maglev train. This is already happening, and China is pushing the envelope further. This experimental T-flight train is expected to reach speeds of 1,200 kilometers per hour, overtaking even the fastest commercial jets. Meanwhile, Hyperloop technology proposes even faster speeds, with future systems aiming for 4,800 kilometers per hour. <laughs> These advancements threaten short-haul flights the most. Currently, flights covering distances under 1,500 kilometers account for nearly half of all commercial aviation traffic. They're also the least efficient in terms of time, cost, and environmental impact. For instance, flying between Los Angeles and San Francisco, a 600-kilometer trip, takes 1.5 hours in the air, but much longer when you're factoring in the airport delays, security checks, and boarding. In comparison, a Hyperloop system could reduce that travel time to just 30 minutes, directly competing with air travel and offering a more seamless experience. The aviation industry isn't ignoring these threats. Experts like Hugh Hunt from the University of Cambridge warn that aviation's reliance on fossil fuels makes it increasingly vulnerable. As global carbon reduction targets become stricter, airlines face mounting pressure to cut emissions. While they explore alternatives like biofuels and hydrogen, these solutions remain years away from widespread adoption. Meanwhile, hyperloops and maglevs, which run on electricity and have the potential to use renewable energy, are emerging as greener and more sustainable options. But why has the US, a leader in aviation, fallen behind in this race for high-speed land travel? While East Asian countries have focused heavily on maglev technology, the US has spent years experimenting with hyperloops with little to show for it. Japan's maglev project, the Chuo Shinkansen, is set to connect Tokyo and Nagoya by 2030, cutting travel time for the 285-kilometer trip from 100 minutes to just 40. Similarly, China's Shanghai Maglev already operates at speeds of 431 kilometers per hour, and its proposed T-flight system could transform routes like Wuhan to Beijing into half-hour journeys. In contrast, the US has been slow to build infrastructure. Hyperloop companies like Virgin Hyperloop and Hyperloop Transportation Technologies have conducted promising tests but are still far from launching operational routes. A lack of government support, high construction costs, and regulatory hurdles have stalled progress. Instead of focusing on maglev systems, which have proven effective in East Asia, the US gambled on Hyperloop technology, a high-risk, high-reward approach that has yet to deliver results. East Asia's focus on maglev technology isn't just about speed, it's also about societal impact. High-speed rail systems have already transformed cities by making them more connected. Imagine what happens when maglev and hyperloop technologies take this a step further. With ultra-fast travel, the concept of a daily commute could expand across borders. A South Korean employee could travel to Tokyo in the morning, work a full day, and return home to Seoul by dinner. <laughs> Similarly, a hyperloop connecting New York to London could make it possible for an American to work in Britain without relocating. This level of connectivity could bring profound societal changes. Economies might become more integrated as businesses and workers move freely across borders. 
Politicians and academics are already debating over whether such systems could lead to closer political ties or even merging nations. In Europe, high-speed rail has already strengthened the European Union's sense of unity. Could a hyperloop between China and South Korea, or between Canada and the US, create similar bonds? Critics argue that the costs and challenges of building these systems are too high, but countries like China prove otherwise. Over the past 15 years, China has built the world's largest high-speed rail network, spanning 35,000 kilometers. It now plans to expand its maglev systems to connect major cities like Beijing and Guangzhou. While these projects are expensive, they bring long-term economic and environmental benefits. By investing heavily in infrastructure, China has positioned itself as a leader in the future of transportation. For aviation businesses, these changes could be devastating. Airlines that rely on short-haul routes for revenue may see demand plummet as passengers switch to faster, cheaper, and more convenient options. Airports could lose relevance, especially smaller regional ones. To survive, airlines might need to pivot toward longer international flights or invest in partnerships with high-speed rail providers. The shift to maglevs and hyperloops isn't just about competing with planes. It's about reshaping how we live and work. When traveling 1,000 kilometers becomes as easy as taking the subway, the idea of distance changes. Families separated by borders could visit more often. Couples in long-distance relationships might see each other daily. Businesses could hire talent from across the globe without worrying about relocation. Even cities could evolve, with urban hubs spreading across regions instead of being confined to small areas. So, will we see a future where planes take a backseat to land-based travel? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching.